Discord messed up really bad. It's completely absurd how this happened, but basically, if you visited a specific Discord website, you'd actually have your account stolen. But basically, this scam targeted NFT communities because, of course, NFT communities are filled with idiots with a lot of money and scammers who want a lot of money. So the way that this scam would work is that the scammers would message one of the admins or just a staff member of the NFT server saying, hey, what's up? I was wondering why your Discord discovery page isn't working. Like, it keeps on redirecting. So what would happen is that they would send you a link to a Discord server discovery page. Now, in my URL bar here, I have one, discord.com slash server slash Azuki, because right now the NFT scam is targeting Azuki. So they'd send you this link, and if you click on this link, you'd expect to show up to this website. But when you clicked on this server link, you would just be redirected to a Discord invite page to BAYC, which is the Bored Apes Yacht Club, you know, the monkey photo NFT stuff. But here's the real kicker. That's what the scammers wanted. In their message, they said that if you click on that link that they send you, what will happen is you will be redirected to the invite link. And that's what happens. So you just assume Discord bug, forget about it. But that's where we dive into behind the scenes on what's going on. Because what just happened is that you got your Discord account stolen. And this is extremely bad for any Discord NFT server owners, because from there, they're going to log into your account and spread a whole bunch of scams and people will lose money or NFTs. They're, they're equivalent, apparently. All right, NFT jokes aside, let's focus on the actual scam itself. So what's going on here is something called cross-site scripting. Before this was patched, what would happen is that when you loaded up the web page, you would have this script here get executed. Now, once again, this is just a normal server discovery page. If I go to mine, it looks like this, but instead of having normal text here, what they did is they added a little bit of a script. Now, I'll try my best to spare you the technical details, and I'm really going to boil it down to very surface level, but basically what happens here is that this little text here says, Discord, stop your script for a second. Whatever you're doing, stop it. Then I want you to run my own script. And what the scammer script actually did is just use YouTube's embedded redirect. And what it does is it calls on this website, bluehin slash underscore X question mark. And this is where cross-site scripting gets really dangerous because when you're actually on this Discord server discovery page, you're technically logged in on this page right now and people can access your token. And what this script specifically does is it goes to that bluehin It tries to redirect to that website. But while it's doing that, it's also trying to grab your Discord token and throw it at the end of the URL. So I decided, why not try to figure out what this bluehin website is? But if I go to bluehin, nothing happens. So of course, I needed to pretend that I sent a Discord token in the payload. So I went to this token generator, I copied this bad boy. Then if I go to the Twitter page and I just look at the format, it's bluehin slash underscore x question mark the token. So bluehin slash underscore x question mark paste in the token and I press enter. What happens is I go through the whole redirect and I get sent to the Azuki page. But what really happened is I actually just sent my Discord token, the fake Discord token, to some sort of website. Of course, though, what I did doesn't tell us a whole lot of information. So I'm going to redo it again. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my console tab. And from here, you can actually go to your network and you can record all your network activity, what happens between the site and your computer. For the way it works now, if I press enter, it records what happens. It takes me to Discord, does the redirect. Direct. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop recording and I'm only going to focus on the first couple of seconds of the whole entire interaction because what happens here is quite interesting. Instead of your Discord token just being sent to bluehin, instead what happens is it actually gets sent to another website. If I look through the requests here and what's happening, I can see that there's an initiator of hawkmedia.org slash underscore x site question mark t for token and then it throws in my Discord token. So it sends my Discord token to another website. And the reason why they're doing this is to make it more complicated and convoluted for people trying to figure out what's going on. Now, if I go to this hawkmedia.org website, I'm just going to type it in hawkmedia.org, and I'm just going to double check that it's spelled right, hawk with an E, kaboom, press enter, takes me to hawkmedia.com. So instead of .org, it's .com. And this looks like a completely normal website. Now, this can throw a lot of people off on what's going on. Is Hawk Media trying to steal my Discord token? No, these are actually two completely different websites. We have hawkmedia.com and hawkmedia.org. So instead of getting redirected to hawkmedia.com, I'm actually just going to copy exactly what the browser was doing. Hawkmedia.org slash underscore x site underscore question mark t. I just did it in a whole new tab. If I press enter, I go through and get redirected to Discord. So there's a little 
little bit of logic going on where if you just try visiting the website manually without any Discord token as your payload, then it'll just take you to hawkmedia.com. Now to double check this whole scam, what I did is I just looked at the domains that they're using. So bluehin was registered on December 13th, whereas the hawkmedia.org, which is kind of that redirect website that will either redirect you to hawkmedia.com or redirect you to Discord if it gets your token, that was registered on December 3rd. And just to double check, hawkmedia.com, this website was registered in 2013. This is by a completely different company. You can tell that they're not related at all. This hawkmedia.org is just some sort of impersonation website. Now, unfortunately, this is where I hit all of the dead ends because from here, I don't really know what's going on. I don't know who's behind this because here's the thing. With normal Discord scammers, the one that steal your account tokens with the fake QR code login scams, all they're trying to do is just get your Discord account to either buy Discord Nitro or make you join some random server like those Discord auth bots that try to join servers for you. The whole point of those scams are just kind of like, it's kind of kid playground territory, right? There's not a whole bunch of gain. It's not too obvious. However, with the NFT and crypto space, you're scamming people out of thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars at some point, depending on how big your heist is. And when you're scamming that much money, you're not going to be an idiot and plaster your name across the whole entire website. Whereas with the Discord kitty scammers that I talk about a lot, those guys love spreading their name everywhere. Now, for the last part of this video, I just want to explain why this is such a stupid mistake and why Discord messed up badly. Addressing the title, because it's definitely, it seems like clickbait, but this is a mistake that should have never happened. If I, I have this linked in the description because, you know, it's always good to credit the people that understand this stuff and explain it to idiots like myself, but just CC goes into a lot of detail. But generally speaking, I just want to read out one quote that just explains how stupid this is. Now, why is the mere existence of this vulnerability so unforgivable? Well, because it's clearly documented multiple times before, both how to properly handle passing this preloaded state object in a safe manner, and exactly how that state, if misused, can lead to this exact problem. Going back to documentation for Redux I linked earlier, basically they talk about how to prevent this from happening, and there's even more documentation talking about how to prevent this from happening. There's documentation plastered all over the internet, and it's a well-known fact. This is something that's been known since 2005. There's this beautiful Vice article that kind of talks about the person that made the MySpace worm that changed the internet forever. What a fantastic title, by the way. But basically, in 2005, in October 2005, this fella went on his MySpace webpage and was able to make a script that would automatically get someone to add them as a friend and then put that script on their page. So it kind of spread like a virus. And it turns out what happened is that he woke up the next morning, got 200 friend requests, and by 1.30 p.m., he amassed more than 2,500 friends and had more than 6,000 requests. Now, all this was back in 2005, right? 2005. You would expect in 2022, Discord would make sure that this never happens, but yet it literally just happened like four days ago. So it just completely blew blows my mind that Discord is incapable of making a website that will prevent cross-site scripting. Thankfully, though, they did patch it very fast. It's still extremely sad to see. It just reeks of incompetence. But regardless, if you did get a message like that and you were sent to a server page that magically redirected you, just change your password. If you're concerned about it, if you change your password, your Discord token will change. But from here on out, it's patched. Hopefully it never happens again, but it probably will if Discord keeps up this clown tomfoolery. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm going to go. Bye-bye.